Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop, and today we're going to be starting our section on reports. Now, reports in Access are probably one of the best features of Access. It's where we can do things like printing out a, a piece of paper that has, you know, maybe a, a business letter, or um, it can give us the results of, say, some business metrics, like, uh, say, a profit and loss sheet for a company would be really nice. Um, or if you want to do something like print it out to a PDF file, you can do that as a report, and that's really, really handy uh, as part of what Access can do. So in my Access database here, I'm going to go to the Create tab, and we're going to go ahead and create a new report using the Report Designer. Okay. Again, I'm not doing the report button. I'm not doing a blank report or report wizard or labels or anything like that. I'm going to start with a blank design. All right. And in here, I'm going to just kind of adjust this here, but you may notice that it looks very similar to how a form looks. You've got a page header and a page footer. And this page header and page footer, if you go to print out this page, then the page footer and header will appear at the top and bottom of every page. Now you can change some of that functionality uh, actually in the, in the format of the report, but we're not going to get into that right now. Instead, what I need to do is kind of do the same thing that I did with the form. I need to set a record source. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure I'm at the in my report, at the main window of my report, and I'm going to go to the data tab where I have record source and then I'm going to click on the ellipsis. Now I could base it upon this query, query cust address with type, but remember that when I did that, I was basing it off of a selection that came from form customer addresses. If I were to use this query again, I would have to make sure that when I open this report that I have a customer uh, selected in my form customer addresses, and that's not going to be the point of the report. I want this report to give me an entire list of all of the addresses right now. And then maybe later I'll add a filter to it. So I'm going to go back into my tables and I'm going to click on addresses. And I'm going to go ahead and add it. And I'm still not going to have quite all of the information that I need because I'm going to want the customer name in here and the address type. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to build up my query. I'm going to need the address types and I'm going to need the, where'd you go, where'd you go, customers, there we go. All right, there we go. So I want to tie those two things together. Now, this query right now represents that, remember, our relationships here, right now it's set to um, only records that have an ID, an address type ID that matches table two address type ID, and customer ID matches an ID from table one customers. So that basically means only the customers that have an address and an address type associated with that address are going to show up right now in this result. And I'm gonna go customer name, attention, address line one, line two, city, state, zip code, and address type. All right, I'm going to save that, close it, and now I've already got some um, lines that I pre-did because I didn't want to make you guys sit there and watch me do it, but this one in particular may be of importance to you. You'll notice that I have this equal sign, city and comma in parentheses with a space, state, space, zip code, and that is that format that we have of how we can kind of concatenate things together. And this is where we've concatenated city, state, and zip, just like we did before. And I just want to show you real quick, if I go to the control source and I click on the ellipsis, here we have that expression builder again, like with what we had in the query. And you can see I can do things like add the customer name, and it'll automatically give me this thing called IntelliSense, which kind of thinks ahead of the game for me, kind of gives me my options based upon what I'm typing and tries to guess what it is that I want to do. And if that, in fact, is what I want to use, I can just type in, like, the first four letters there, press tab, and it'll automatically add it to, to, the, uh, to the expression builder for me. But I don't want the customer name right now. I'm happy with the way this is. 
I'm going to move some things around here, though. Um, I want to kind of scrunch things together a little bit for the address. So let me move things around a little. Oh, that's probably a little too low there. Let me go down one. There we go. And state, city, state, zip. All right. And then I also want to go ahead and add, oops, under my design. Actually, I just go copy, paste, and move this over here. And my attention is going to be address type. All right. So I've got pretty much all the information I could need here. Let me just move this over here. And I'm going to shrink this down a little because address type isn't very big. And one of the things you need to be aware of here is that since this is going to be printed out on paper, you need to make sure that your dimensions match up to give enough room on this report to show up on the report. Because let's say that I took this and I moved it all the way out past uh, eight and a half uh, inches. Okay. Now if I go in and try to view it, you'll notice that right now build two is fine, but I get a second page of blank information. That's because my my um, my text box there. Oops. Let me go back into it here. If I move it even further over, it'll be much more obvious. See, I make it too wide here. And now when I go ahead and view it, you'll see it gets cut off here by the page. And it goes over to the second page. And that's not what we want. So we always have to make sure that we're accounting for the margins on the page and how wide the paper is that we're planning on printing it out on. And most of the standard letter paper is 8.5 by 11. So I always go by 8 because what you can do is if you want to find out what your dimensions are for the paper that you're planning on doing, uh, that you plan on printing to, you can click on this Page Setup tab and then go ahead and click on the Page Setup button. And this will give you basically your printer options. And so you can see here are my margins, my left, right. I'll get rid of that one. Um, I got page. I can change it to portrait or landscape. I can select a paper size or a source. I can change the printer that I plan on printing to. And if I had columns, because uh, I'll get into columns a little bit later, but essentially it means that I could m make this a side-by-side -side column and I can add multiple rows or columns across the page. But I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I just want to take a look here. Oops, I'm in the wrong spot here. Go to Design, Print Preview, and there we go. Okay, it says my selection's a little wider than it should be. I probably need to do a little bit more shrinking down here. Try that one more time. There we go. So now everything prints out on one solid page, and I don't have... Uh, that second page that I have to go view. All right, so that's how you add data to a report. And you see, again, it has basically the same exact uh, similarities to what we have on the form. It just prints it out nice and neatly on a single piece of paper for us. Next up, we're going to do some grouping. Uh, we're going to kind of do some neat things of how we can organize our data on this report. And uh, I look forward to showing that to you.